No matter how many times you've done it, going to the airport is always an experience. There's a certain feeling of budding adventure that only the airport can give you. And as much fun as they are today, there used to be more to the affair than duty-free in TSA. Come fly with me, Marshall, back to a time when airports had all these bells and whistles that you just don't see anymore. Observation Deck one thing you won't find much of in airports these days, and it's a darn shame, is those observation decks. Yep, those glass-enclosed havens where folks like me could sit back, relax, and watch the majestic birds of the sky take off and land. Back in the day, plane spotting was more than just a hobby. It was a downright pastime. Families would gather at these observation decks, and kids would be wide-eyed with excitement as they saw those jumbo jets soaring through the clouds. The best part? It didn't cost a dime and you didn't need a ticket to enjoy the show. But as you know, times have changed, especially after the unfortunate day on September 11th, 2001. Security concerns went through the roof and suddenly the simple pleasure of watching airplanes became a logistical nightmare. Those observation decks, once bustling with families and aviation enthusiasts, started disappearing appearing like yesterday's news. These days, security measures are so tight that getting anywhere close to the runway without a boarding pass is like trying to squeeze toothpaste back into the tube. They say it's for our safety, but I can't help feeling a bit of longing for the days when you could bring a picnic basket, set up camp on the observation desk, and spend a lazy Sunday afternoon watching the comings and goings of the friendly skies. Colorful luggage tags. Colorful luggage tags tug at my heartstrings. In the olden days, those tags were a little piece of art attached to your suitcase. Each airport had its own logo, a burst of colors, and a unique design that made it easy to spot your bag in a sea of black and brown suitcases. It was a bit like collecting postage stamps, you know? Each tag told a story of your travels, and it was a darn shame when they started disappearing. I remember the days when you could tell if a bag was headed to Chicago or Paris just by glancing at the tag. Chicago's O'Hare had its own color combination and design, while Paris's Orly had a completely different look. It added personality to the whole travel experience. But time hasn't been kind to these little things at all, and in the name of a fish, those vibrant tags have become relics of the past. Now it's all about those computer-generated black-and-white barcodes slapped onto your luggage like some sort of high-tech name tag. Sure, it might be more efficient for the airlines, but where's the fun, I ask you? It's all boring these days, with everyone's bags sporting the same bland barcodes. Harry Krishnas. Harry Krishnas, you couldn't stroll through a major airport in the 70s and 80s without encountering these be-robed followers of Krishna. They were a sight, dressed with their iconic saffron robes, heads cleanly shaved and tambourines in hand. They had a knack for handing out flowers and chanting their Hare Krishna mantra while gracefully soliciting donations. It was almost a rite of passage for travelers back then to be approached by a Hare Krishna devotee as they hustled to catch their flights. It became such a recognizable part of the airport scene that it even made its way into the 1980 film Airplane. But as the years rolled on and security measures tightened, the days of the Hare Krishnas freely mingling with passengers began to fade. Airports, with their heightened focus on security, were no longer as well welcoming to unsolicited solicitation. And then in 1997, the city council at LAX put the icing on the cake by imposing a ban that made it clear no more Harry Krishnas approaching airline passengers. It was the end of an era, I tell you. The days of receiving a flower and a chant while trying to make your way through the hustle and bustle of the airport were gone. Some of you might say it was a relief, while others like me miss those Hare Krishnas. I miss seeing those robe devotees strolling through the airports and spreading their message one flower at a time. 
courtesy cars. There used to be a time when businessmen ruled the skies and courtesy cars were a godsend. One of the perks of these high-flying businessmen was the sweet deal of using an airport-owned automobile. Yep, you heard me right, a real car at the airport, all for a nominal fee, of course. Imagine stepping off your flight and instead of elbowing your way to the rental car counter like a mere mortal, you would just saunter over to the airport's fleet of courtesy cars. It was like having your own chauffeur waiting for you. No waiting in line, no dealing with paperwork, just hop in and hit the road. Coin-operated TV chairs. Ah, the good old days of coin-operated TV chairs at the airport. If you weren't in the mood for a good book, those TV chairs were an oasis in the middle of the desert. Picture this, you're sitting in the terminal, your flight is delayed, and they're back to you are these magical chairs with built-in TVs. Drop in a coin, adjust the volume, and voila! 30 minutes of distraction from the monotony of waiting. Most airports had a dedicated section with these special chairs, each equipped with a coin-operated television. For just a quarter, you could enjoy 30 minutes of local programming and make the time pass quicker. But, my friend, times have changed. In an age where pretty much everyone has their own portable entertainment, be it a smartphone, tablet, or what have you, the appeal of those coin-operated TV chairs dwindled. The economic viability of maintaining and operating these telechair setups became questionable for most airports. Calling all passengers, this is Captain Marshall asking you to give this video a like and please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened Things are about to get turbulent on our next destination. Shoe shiners. People used to dress to the nines to fly. It used to be that stepping onto an airplane was an event. You'd find folks donned in their finest attire, ready to embrace the glamour of air travel. And what better way to complete the ensemble than with a well-polished pair of shoes? That's why shoe shine stands were an essential part of the airport experience. Shoe shine stands were a staple at airports, a place where travelers could sit back, relax, and let someone work their magic on their shoes. It was a ritual, a moment of pampering before embarking on a journey. You'd see businessmen in sharp suits and ladies in elegant dresses, all taking a moment to check if their footwear was in top-notch condition. Oh my, oh my, how times have changed. Nowadays, it seems folks roll out of bed, toss on whatever's comfortable, be it gym shoes, sandals, or even pajama bottoms, and off they go to catch a flight. I even saw a young man wearing a tank top on his way to catch his flight. It's a far cry from the days when air travel was a sophisticated affair. With the decline of formal attire and air travel, shoeshine services at airports have taken a hit. The once thriving stands now find themselves in a world where people might not see the need for a good shoeshine. After all, when they're sporting sneakers or flip-flops, the charm of a polished pair of Oxfords may be lost on ya. Free baggage carts. If it's free, give it to me. Free baggage carts used to be as ubiquitous as a friendly smile at the airport. In many parts of the world, these carts were owned by the airport itself, a simple yet convenient service provided to customers. Now, this was once the norm in the United States, too, until the late 1960s when the buggy business took a turn. Back then, airports in the U.S. used to manage their own luggage carts, offering them the travelers as a courtesy. But as the story goes, in the late 60s, a company by the name of Smart Cart came into play. Airports, in an effort to cut costs and perhaps streamline operations, decided to subcontract the luggage cart service to this external company. The rationale was simple. By outsourcing the cart business, airports no longer had to worry about retrieving carts from all corners of the parking lot or dealing with passengers who, let's say, found the cart so handy that they decided to take them home as souvenirs. After all, those carts were a useful tool for schlepping luggage not just to the check-in counter, but sometimes all the way to the car. So with the advent of Smart Cart, the landscape 
landscape changed. Travelers started encountering those coin-operated carts, and the days of free baggage carts became a thing of the past in many U.S. airports. Life insurance kiosks Life insurance kiosks were as common as the buzzing of departure gates. For many years, these kiosks were staffed with smiling personnel ready to offer you flight insurance coverage, $25,000 or more for just a few dollars. And if you didn't fancy talking to someone, you could always find some self-serving vending machines conveniently placed near just about every gate. And let me take you back to a dark moment in the mid-20th century, specifically 1955. Stairs. Ah, yes. I remember the days when boarding an aircraft involved a bit of an outdoor adventure. Back then, you had to embrace the elements walking outside and climbing up a flight of stairs to reach your plane. Nowadays, though, those outdoor staircases are more of a rarity. The introduction of enclosed walkways known as jetways or jet bridges has become the norm at most commercial airports. Delta Airlines was a pioneer in this regard, providing the first jetway at Atlanta's Hartsfield Airport in 1961. These enclosed walkways made boarding and disembarking more convenient, sheltering passengers from the weather and providing a direct link from the airport to the plane. Smoking. I'm sure you saw this one coming, so let's get it out of the way. Let me tell you about the days when you could light up just about any anywhere in an airport. It was a time when the haze of cigarette smoke lingered in terminal lounges without a care. But thankfully, those days are behind us now. Back in the day, there were no restrictions on smoking in airports. You could puff away while waiting for your flight at the airport or even in the plane itself. But then, in the 1970s, the Surgeon General entered the scene with those health warnings and suddenly designated smoking areas became the new norm. These areas were like little havens for smokers offering a respite amid the increasingly smoke-free zones. The shift continued and cigarettes were eventually banned on certain flights. Interestingly, the most congested area in the airport arrival lounge during those times wasn't the baggage claim, it was the perimeter around the first pedestal ashtray that passengers encountered as they exited. Exited. It was like a congregation point for smokers, creating an unintended hot spot. Fast forward to today and smoking restrictions at many airports are tighter than ever. Folks who want to light up often find themselves banished to specific outdoor areas, sometimes standing a good 20 feet or more outside the exit doors of the building. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to present day. Tell us about your time travel experience in the comment section down below, and if you liked the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you for choosing Memory Manor.